Hello my friends and a very warm welcome back to my painting channel and in this video I'm going to be painting something completely different. You know I enjoy painting different things on this channel so I am painting a cool little model from the Steamforged Games range. So this is from something called the Animal Adventures, the Cats and Catacombs box. So as you can see I have a box of little cats here from D&D. &D. So these are little cat models that you can use for your Dungeons and Dragons and they are very 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 cute. So this one is supposed to be, or it is a ragdoll cat. And because we have a ragdoll cat at home called Luna, I decided to paint this one up uh, kind of based on Luna a little bit. So it's not going to be exactly the same because it's quite difficult painting something like this to make it look exactly the same, but it is definitely based on or influenced by uh, Luna herself. So first things first, I'm going to start by using a nice bone white colour from Vallejo. And this is a really nice creamy white colour. So this is how we're going to base all of Luna's fur here. So we're just going to paint all of the fur using this really nice creamy white tone. It's important with this to make sure that you have a little bit of water in your paint to make sure that the paint sticks to the miniature and manipulates and moves onto the miniature in a really nice equal fashion. Especially when you're painting things like fur because you kind of want the paint to sit in between those recessed areas as well. So once that's done then, we're going to move on and use a royal purple. Um, with this one, this bard, we kind of want a little bit of colour into this one. So we want this bard to really look quite flamboyant and really nice looking. So we're going to use this really nice royal purple colour, this really nice uh, sort of deep, deep purple colour um, that we're going to use as a, as a cool base tone. And then we're going to build this colour back up and really pull out some great highlights and some really nice contrast on this as well. So this is just the base colour, so you don't have to be too careful with this, so just make sure that we get this just around those little sleeves, those little arm parts, just around uh, the front there. Now once that's done then, we're just going to move on and use a cool tone of medium olive from Vallejo, and we're just going to paint all of the back area using this nice uh, sort of light olive green tone as you can see. So I'm going to try to be careful not to paint this onto any of the leather straps and things like that, and of course we're not going to get this onto the fur, we're just going to try to take out time and make sure that we get this just across that sort of kind of cloak looking thing. I don't know whether it's armor or whether it's cloaks, so we're going to paint it like a cloak, but we are going to put a little bit of uh, tone and texture into the gilding and things like that across the back as well. So yeah, we're just going to try to take our time, especially around the front, just like so, just making sure that we don't get this green on the purple and especially, as I said, onto those fur areas, onto the area where we've already painted that really nice uh, cream tone. It is a little bit difficult as you get a bit closer around to the front of the miniature, uh, but persevere and use the tip of the brush and you'll be fine. From there then we're going to use brown sand and with the brown sand then I'm just going to base all of the instrument here. I don't know whether this is supposed to be a lute or anything along those lines, but it does look very much like a string instrument to me. So we're just going to paint around uh, the, the wooden area and we're just going to base the whole sort of uh, instrument just in this really cool brown sand tone and then we'll build that up a little bit later. And again we're going to build this up into a nice light sort of flashy flamboyant sort of colour. We kind of want this character to have a little bit of class and a little bit of colour and tone to it as well. From there I'm going to use a Dark Rust 302. This is one of my go-to colours on the channel, this is one of my favourite colours and I'm just going to base all of the leathers with this and you would have seen me do this countless times by now. This is something that I do quite often and something that works out really really well as you go. So we're just going to be very very careful to paint across all of these little bags and little satchels and things that uh, this little character, this little lunar has got across her side and we're also going to paint that just across the leather strap going right across the back here as well. I'm going to be careful not to get this across any of the green that we've already painted and of course the brown sand as well. We're going to paint this as well just around uh, the front areas so those little sort of greaves uh, almost like gauntlet type things just around the front paws but I'm also going to be very very careful and paint it just around the collar as well. Now this is probably the most difficult part so just take your time just try to make sure that you don't get this dark color on any of the fur that you've already painted but don't worry we'll tie this all together with a nice wash as we go but as you can see I'm just trying to use the tip of the brush and just trying to be as careful as possible not to get this all over some of the bits that we've already based. When I base coat my models I always like to look at it from the outside in so I always like to paint uh, from the inside out sorry don't get that mixed up I always like to paint the inside the inner areas parts that are harder to reach first and then make our way out to parts that are easier to, to reach. Uh, so yeah always think of it as inside out so we're painting from the inside outwards. 
And once that's done then, I'm just going to put a little bit of ghost grey just across the uh, little scroll here. Looks like Luna has got a little bit of sheet music just across uh, the, uh, the belt area just around here. And so we're just going to base that using this really nice uh, ghost grey colour just like so. And this is going to make the sheet music really pop and stand out. From there, I'm also going to use Brassy Brass, and with this one, we're going to use this. Uh, as you can imagine, we're going to do all of the gilding using this Brassy Brass, so again, using the very, very tip of the brush. So this one is going to take a little bit of concentration because these are very, very small, intricate parts of the miniature. These are very small, intricate pieces on the model. So we're going to be very, very careful just to pick out some of the gilding and pick out some of the details, just like so. And we're going to do all we can just to be as careful as possible. The good thing we're doing this as base coats and base colors is if you do make any mistakes it is quite easy or relatively easy to go back and fix this is why we focus so much on the base colors to begin with and getting all of those base colors in before we put our wash in tie those colors together and then rebuild and, and sort of uh, boost the vibrancy and the contrast on those colors so as you can see just being nice and careful now once all of the gilding is done we're also going to paint all of the strings on this string instrument that we've got just across here so we're just going to paint across the uh the little tuners just across the top and then of course down the strings as well once that's done we're going to use gun metal again one of the go-to colors in the channel this is very much like citadel's lead belcher um it's a very dark sort of uh silver color that you can really sort of build up from and we're just going to paint this across the uh the buckles on the uh the the, the sort of leather uh, bags which are shaped like fish and we're going to paint this just around the little bells uh that uh, uh, that this little rag doll has got just around uh on this side with the uh the lute style sort of string instrument as well now you could paint that also in brass if you wanted to, but I just chose to do something a little bit different. Now from there I'm going to use a Jorel Din Turquoise. That is a mouthful and a difficult one to say as well. Now you can use any colour for this, but like I say, basing this on our little lunar at home, uh, ragdoll cats tend to have very, very nice bright blue eyes. So I'm trying to paint the eyes using this really, really bright sort of colour here. Um, this is a difficult part of the miniature because the miniatures are actually very, very small. So don't worry if you don't get the eyes perfect, something you can always build on later. I'm also then going to use a pale flesh color and using this really, really sort of pale pink color, I'm just going to paint this up in the inside of the ears here, up in her ears. And this is just going to give her a little bit of tone and texture and slight difference to all of that sort of creamy sort of flesh color, uh, the fur color that we've got. And once that's dry, then we're also then going to use a soft tone. So this is a nice um, sort of light brown, almost like a seraphim sepia color from Citadel. This is a nice sort of warm brown color. And we're just going to cover the model using this warm brown color. This is going to uh, bring out some of the color and some of the shade and some of the details in all of that fur, as you can see. But it's also going to tie a lot of these colors, a few of these earthy tones as well together with this green, the browns. We're going to tie these together in a nice, simple, easy and uh, quick fashion fashion just like so. So we're just going to cover the whole miniature. We're going to try to make sure that this doesn't pool too much in any specific areas. We're going to manipulate and move it around as we need uh, depending on where we want it to be dark. Now once all of that is dry, so it is important to give this plenty of time to dry because with your washes they do, uh, they are quite watery so they do take a little bit of time to dry. And then we're just going to use a very detailed dry brush and we're going to dry brush all around that fur. As you can see I'm just trying to be very very careful dry brushing this just around uh, the sort of neck area, that big 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 sort of mane that uh, that this little cat has got that this ragdoll has got and just trying to build up that contrast like so now by building it up in this way we're going to start to get a lot more vibrancy and a lot more color and a lot more texture and tone from it and it's really going to look great the trick with dry brushing is to make sure that there's almost no paint on your brush so just use a small bit of uh, kitchen towel or kitchen roll and just sort of rub the brush across that kitchen roll until there's almost no paint left on that brush and then when you go to the miniature you can build it up in slow slow steady layers you don't want to have too much on your brush and overdo it you kind of want to underdo it first less is more is always the motto once you've done the bone white, then you're going to move on to using an elfic flesh. This is the perfect highlight to the bone white. This is a nice, bright, vibrant cream color. So this is going to give us a really nice sort of light, light tone. And as you can see, it's already making an effect. Although there's very, very little paint on the brush, as I say, make sure that there's almost no paint on the brush. By doing it in this way, it is going to build us up and just build our vibrancy and give us that really, really nice sort of tone and texture. You can see how quickly and easily we're starting to build this color up and we're starting to build that character in such a quick, simple way. 
just trying to be very careful. The reason why I say about using such a small dry brush is because you don't want to get too much or uh, as much or any of the paint really when you're dry brushing on the other areas. Now the cool thing by dry brushing first is it gives you the opportunity to fix those areas later. Um, but it doesn't matter too much. We're going to try to be as careful as we can anyway. Now this is purely an optional set. I'm just going to use a very, very, very light bit of rotten white. Now, rotten white is a effect or a technical effect paint from Vallejo. And it's called that because it is insanely vibrant. It is a very, very, very vibrant white. So it is a great color to use as a base tone before you put other things on for like plasma weapons. So I'm using this just to pick out a real, real light, light tone on that front main. Now from there, again, this is purely optional. You don't have to do this. Like I said, I'm basing this on our Luna. So I'm basing this on our cat because our cat Luna, our ragdoll, has a very, very dark sort of pattern around her face. Although the rest of her foot is very, very bright, her being a seal point cat, she has a very, very dark face and very, very dark features around her face. So I'm using an Arbuckle's brown at first with this. This is a very reddy sort of brown color. Now by the time you put two layers of this on, you'll realize how brown it is. But in the first layer, you can see just how red and pinky this tone is and the reason why I'm using this one is to just break it up so that it doesn't go from white to black but it's just about giving it a little bit more tone and texture in between so they come it becomes a little bit more pleasing on your eye so I'm just using this using the very very tip of my size zero detail brush just to try to pick out some of those hairs and some of those little individual strands now once that is dry, I'm then also going to use leather brown. This is a nice dark brown colour and I'm going to start to pick that out around and on top of that Arbuckle's brown. And the reason for that, as I say, is just about giving you a few different tones and textures so it doesn't just go from cream white to black. It's about having that little bit of an extra tone, extra colour and something that makes it, again, as I say, pleasing on the eye, something that you can actually look at and really sort of think, oh, this looks really interesting. Again, this is all purely optional. If you're happy with just dry brushing your cat uh, hair all sort of uh, creams and you're happy with the way that it comes out because it looked great originally, then by all means, then you can keep to that. This is all purely just me trying to base it on my own cat. So we're going to use a little bit of soft tone then just around the eyes. So we're just going to paint this just around the eye areas and just across the very edge of the tail. And the reason for this again is just about darkening a few of those bits up so that it's not all just bright white. Again, this is all purely optional. This isn't something you have to follow through religiously or do exactly the same as me. This is just me trying to make it a little bit more individual and a little bit more of my own sort of personal um, sort of painting style. Once that's done, then I'm going to use a tenebrous grey. Again, if you see me use this, you don't have to use this colour. You could just go straight for black if you wanted to because they are very similar. This is just a very dark grey colour and it is also a really good colour in terms of manipulation. You can use this on the very tip of your brush like so and you can really pick out a lot of different details. And again, because I said I wanted some of the color and some of the tone and then some darkness, that's where we've used that dark brown, then the sort of leather brown, and then this color, this sort of dark blacks, dark gray color. This is all just about building that tone and texture, especially around where you can see that wash has made a really cool, nice looking sort of light tone around her face. From there, then I'm gonna go back to uh, the sort of light blue, light turquoise color that we're using just on the eyes and we're just going to try to slowly pick out those eyes just like so. The hardest part I found was trying to put the, the black slit in the eyes. So take your time with that. That's something that I very, very much struggled with myself. Once that's done, I'm then going to use a medium olive again. And again, as you can see, using some of the techniques that we've used on the channel multiple times before, I'm just going to use a few little brush strokes and a few little stippling effects just to build the vibrancy back up on that really nice sort of green cloak, that sort of... Um, over the shoulder cape that this little cat is wearing here. And there we go, as you can see, we're already building that up. And uh, once that's done, then we're gonna use Goblin Green as well as a nice highlight to that, just to get that vibrancy really popping and to get that color really, really standing out. And again, you can see me going straight in with the stippling effect, the very, very tip of that size zero brush just there. And we're just gonna slowly, slowly, gently build that color up and build that tone up. It is important here to try to, to try not to get this on those uh, bits of gilding that we've already painted, but this is gonna give you the opportunity to pick out some of those details and really have a bit of fun sort of building the vibrancy and building that highlight just across the back area and around the cloak, just going around the neck area and the nape as well. This is pretty cool as you can see. So we're just building our way around, being very, very careful and using the very, very tip of the brush as we like to do. 
And there we go. You can really see this cat is starting to come to life already. You can really see sort of those colors and that vibrancy really starting to pop. So we're going back with our leather brown color that we used earlier. And this time we're going to use this so uh, exactly as it says on the tin. And we're going to paint all of our leathers. So again, I'm sticking with that stippling effect, that stippling motion. And just using the very tip of the brush just to dab this across all of those sort of leathery areas and leather patches. Just like so. Just going around the collar area and the leather that is just going across her back here. And then, of course, just paint in all of these little uh, bags and satchels just down the side with the little fish clips just across the side. So as I said, these are insanely cute little miniatures. They have loads and loads of character. These are actually from the Steamforged Games set. So this is from the same sort of sets, uh, fr from the actual same company that I uh, used the Resident Evil 2 miniatures. So these all come pre-assembled, pre-built, everything like that. You don't have to do anything other than uh, base spray them, so prime them and paint them. Once the leather brown is dry, we're going to use the leather brown and deep brown in half and half, so one blob of each. Again, this is a very simple technique. This is just a, a half stop up in colour and just building that tone in a nice, even, natural way. If you've watched me paint before, you'll know the technique. If not, it is a simple way to paint. It is just taking your base colour and your next highlight and mixing them into an equal part so that it creates a half stop and a half way in between your base tone and your highlight before then eventually then going to your highlight light color like we will do so now so then we're just going to use the deep brown on its own and again we're just going to pick up the very edges this time just so that we get that vibrancy and almost the effect where the light is just picking off and catching on the very very edges of these bags uh, just on her side here and you can really see the way that that texture and that tone is really sort of catching and you can really see the sort of effect and that vibrancy starting to boost just off those bags just like so and we're going to do the same thing just across those leather straps as well. Just going to use that stippling effect and some of those little scratchy effects that I use on the models just to create a little bit of a, a worn out sort of uh, used sort of leather look just across uh, all of these browns just like so. Very, very simple, very effective and a great looking way of painting leathers. It really looks fantastic. So we're going to move on and do the uh, the the. the the, the purple colors so we're going to go back to uh, we're going to use a heavy violet now for this and so we're just going to build this up and doing the same thing again we're going to paint the uh, the areas of the purple that we want to boost while leaving the sort of um, the shade in all of those recess points so you can really see the darker areas while building and boosting up those sort of light of colors this heavy purple is the perfect next stop from the royal purple this is going to give us that vibrant boost that we want to begin with and then we're really going to take off with that and turn it up into almost kind of like a pinky sort of tone as well because the cool thing with purple is you can go into a pink and get really vibrant results so we're going to use the heavy purple the heavy violet that we've got from the Vallejo color and we're going to mix that in 50 50 with the deep purple from the AK interactive range and we're just going to build this up um, very very gently so this is our half stop as I said before and we're going to try to pick up those folds um, while leaving all of the darker areas in the recesses and once that's done we're going to use the deep purple just on its own and you can really see those uh, purple tones and the purple colors are really starting to boost and this deep purple here almost goes into a kind of pink or a subtle pink color and again when you paint in these purples to highlight them you can add these really nice pink sort of colors and pink sort of tones and they really really do allow your purple to boost it uh, to, to really stand out it allows the vibrancy of that purple to really really look incredible and look like something else so just like so, once that's done then we're going to go back to the brown sand and we're going to paint around this little stringed instrument, this little lute kind of thing. And again, sticking with the brush strokes and the stippling effects and things like that, we're going to paint all the way around this little stringed instrument. So we're going to paint all around the outside, just like so. Just trying to be careful not to get this on any of the other areas that we've already painted. And it doesn't matter with these brush strokes because all of these little brush strokes and things, if there's a little bit of the underneath color showing through, that will add to the effect of wood grain. So that's great. That's kind of what we're looking for. Once that's dry, we're going to use a light earth color from the AK Interactive. And again, this is just about painting those brush strokes. Doesn't matter if we leave some of the, the underneath color because that's creating that wood grain, that wood effect. That's exactly what we're looking for. Just like so. And we're going to paint this all the way around. And this is really going to boost that vibrance. It's really going to make this, this little wooden uh, instrument really stand off the model as well and really look completely different, which is great. It's fantastic. Just being careful not to get this on any of the other colors that we've already painted. 
And then once we've done that, we're going to move on and use Retributor Armor. So this is a great, great uh, gold color from Citadel. And we're just going to gently, 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 almost dry brush this if you like. You can dry brush this if you want. I'm just going to add this sort of gold tone, this gold color into this brass that we've got, just going down the instrument, just like so. And you can also do the same thing and build up some of the gilding on the back as well if you wanted to and really make it pop and stand out off the model as well. Now, all in all, that is Luna. That is our little ragdoll uh, bard complete. It is a fun, interesting and completely different model to paint. And I hope that this is something that you guys uh, really enjoyed to watch me paint. I do have another five models in the box. So if you'd like to see more of the cats and catacombs, then please let me know. I would be more than happy to paint more on the channel for you. So just give me a shout if you'd like. So so, as always my friends leave me a comment in the bottom in the comment section if you enjoyed this video if you liked some of the techniques and if you took anything from it um, and as always thank you so much for everything that you do you support your comments your likes your shares everything like that i really really do appreciate it take care of yourselves my friends and i will see you guys on the next one